Hi, my name is David. Welcome to church this morning. My wife Espy and I have been at Church on the Hill for about five years now. We love it here. I'm excited that you've chosen to be with us today and I hope that you'll be open to the messages today through the songs and the teaching. Take a second and connect with us either by commenting below or by looking for connect at oth.life. Today is the first Sunday in our new series called Different. I'm looking forward to Brian's message today about different kind of hope. So grab another cup of coffee and join us in worship this morning. It's almost that time where we have an opportunity to give. But before we do that, 
I'm going to read a few verses from 2 Corinthians, and I hope you'll listen closely. You will be enriched in every way for all generosity, which produces thanksgiving to God through us. For the ministry of what this service is not only supplying the needs of saints, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the proof provided by this ministry, they will glorify God for your obedient confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone. Did you notice those themes? Your generosity produces thanksgiving to God. Not only does your generosity supply needs, it overflows into expressions of thanks to God. People will glorify God for your obedience and generosity. Our church is uniquely invested in our community and in helping to provide for the needs of the people around us. It's amazing to see what happens when thankfulness runs over into generosity. Thank you for what you give. Remember, your generosity equals His glory. Let's pray over our time of giving right now. Lord, I pray that our generosity would overflow into our community because of our thankfulness toward you. May you receive all the glory and all the honor from our giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey everyone, Pastor Brian here. Thank you guys for tuning in this week. Are you familiar with the phrase that laughter is the best medicine? It's surely a good medicine for the soul, but I'm not sure it gives any real physical benefits. I'm not sure laughter can cure a cold or heal the sick. There is a feeling, an emotion that has proven to have a physical impact on people. You see, there was a man, Major F.J. Harold Kushner, who was an Army medical officer and a POW in Vietnam for over five years. As a POW, he met a young Marine who had already been in the prison camp for two years. Now, he kept himself in good health, and he led the camp's thought reform group because his captors had said if he and his men cooperated, they would be released. Yet, as time went on, this man began to lose hope that his captors would deliver on their promise. Eventually, he realized that they were lying to him. Major Kushner said that once that fact sunk in, this once energetic and healthy man became like a zombie, refusing all work and rejecting all offers of food and encouragement. He simply lay on his cot, sucking his thumb, and after a few weeks, he tragically died. So what kept this man going for so long? What had he lost that completely changed his demeanor and his outlook on life? The answer is hope. One physiologist puts it like this, hope, faith, and a purpose in life is medicinal. This is not merely a statement of belief, but a conclusion proved by meticulously controlled scientific experiment. There's something about hope that is so powerful it can change the body and the soul. You see, we have a living hope because we have a risen Christ.
is our first week in a new series. Here's what it's all about. In this world, you'll have struggles. You'll face opposition. You'll be challenged. You will suffer. And there's a reason for that. This world is not your home. So answer hate with love. Find joy in the midst of trials. Serve others without expecting anything in return and rely on a strength beyond yourself. This is the message found in 1 Peter, a letter written to a growing community of Jesus followers experiencing real world struggles and living out their faith. So you are invited to join us as we discover how we, the people of Easter, are called to be different. The Apostle Peter wrote a letter to a group of Christians who needed hope. They were being persecuted by Emperor Nero in Rome. Nero falsely blamed Christians for a great fire that broke out in the city and began to torture Christians. These Christians had reason to believe that this persecution, which had already taken a toll, was only going to continue. You know what I find interesting? Nero's attempts to stop the spread of Christianity only caused it to spread further. In fact, Throughout history, when Christians are persecuted, the faith we claim spreads like, well, like a fire. (laughs) When Christians cozy up to power, authority, and status, well, that's when things tend to go awry. A persecuted church may feel hard to relate to. In America, we don't have to worry about being tortured for our faith. Yet we all need hope in some area of our lives. Yeah, I need hope that I can make it through working in ministry, raising a one-year-old, and going to school all at the same time. There are times when I just feel totally worn out, discouraged, and weary because it feels like I can't do it all, or at least not do it all very well. You know, we have all experienced loss or worry, fear, financial strain, and we've felt overwhelmed. Sometimes the problem, it, it lingers. It just doesn't go away. So where are you weary? Where do you need hope? If we can pray for you, let us know in the comments below. You know, it's to a weary, worried group of people that the Apostle Peter says these words. Celebrate with praises the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has shown us his extravagant mercy. For his fountain of mercy has given us a new life. We are reborn to experience a living, energetic hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We are reborn into a perfect inheritance that can never perish, never be defiled, and never diminish. It is promised and preserved forever in the heavenly realm for you. Through our faith, the mighty power of God constantly guards us until our full salvation is ready to be revealed in the last time. May the thought of this cause you to jump for joy, even though lately you've had to put up with the grief of many trials. But these only reveal the sterling core of your faith, which is far more valuable than gold that perishes, for even gold is refined by fire. Your authentic faith will result in even more praise, glory, and honor when Jesus, the anointed one, is revealed. So in the midst of persecution, of struggle and suffering, Peter reminds his readers what God has done. God has given us new life, and this life is one that is meant to be filled with a living hope. You know, Christian hope is an interesting thing. It's not optimism. It's not just assuming everything will work out for the best. It's not ignoring the painful things in life or even looking away to heaven while pretending our struggles aren't real. No, no. Peter tells us that we have a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I mean, imagine being a disciple of Jesus. You've learned from him. You've walked with him. You've eaten with him. You've seen him perform miracles. But then Everything gets messed up because he dies. He's crucified. So what would you do when when you see the empty tomb? More so, what would you do when you saw his body risen from the grave, when he said your name days after you watched him die? I mean, how you would view the future and the world would completely and radically change. See, I think the hope of what God could do in our world would burst out of you if that was the case. And yet, here we are now today. We live in the tension where God's goodness can transform us, but so can our difficult circumstances. Peter's message here is that when we hold on to the hope that Christ gives us, even in the midst of immense pain and suffering, somehow God works through it to make us into more beautiful human beings. And he uses two images to get this point across. He says that we are born again into a perfect inheritance that can never perish, never be defiled, and never diminish. This is kind of like Peter's way of saying, it's like you've got money in the bank. Your soul in Christ is secure. It's guaranteed. 
So when Peter says, we have faith in God's goodness and the security of our, sal- of our salvation, even in the midst of suffering and difficulty, we are like silver or gold refined by fire. The fire, rather than destroying the metal, only makes the impurities rise out of it. In other words, we can come out on the other side of suffering with more wisdom, more humility, more kindness, more joy. Since Christ rose from the dead, we have a hope that our present circumstances are not an indication of our future reality. Let me say that again. Since Christ rose from the dead, we have hope that our present circumstances are not an indication of our future reality. We have hope because not even death itself can stop our Jesus. We have hope, not that something will make it all work out, but because we know someone who is making all things new. We have hope, we have eternal hope, no matter our circumstances, because we trust in the character of our creator. He's good, he is at work, he is faithful, he is kind, he is patient, he is just, he is loving, he is mighty, and he is with you. And if that's true, and we can hold on to that truth, struggle only makes us stronger. So remember, we have a living hope because we have a risen Christ. to the 
Here is what makes our salvation different. Our salvation leads to a living hope that allows us to be transformed in the midst of trials. I told the story of Harold Kushner earlier, but I also want to share the story of Colonel Ben Purcell. Ben was captured in Vietnam when his helicopter was shot down. He was a POW for just over five years, nearly all of them in solitary confinement. He escaped imprisonment twice and twice was returned to camp. Yet he made it through by doing small things like making a cross out of bamboo for his cell, reciting scriptures that he knew, making a communion set for himself, praying regularly and writing little notes to his wife. He told himself each day, Ben, I hope this is the day that you are going home. The sun would go down and he would say, well, tomorrow's another day. Another POW, Admiral Jim Stockdale, who also made it out of Vietnam, put his experience like this. He said, I never lost faith in the end of the story. I never doubted not only that I would get out, but also that I would prevail in the end and turn the experience into the defining event in my life, which, in retrospect, I would not trade. You see, we can become different, even better humans when we hold on to the hope that comes from the resurrected Jesus. For Colonel Purcell, his hope gave him the strength to persevere his circumstances and eventually the strength to meet and even forgive one of his captors. That's a different kind of hope. Our salvation is so much more than fire insurance. It is a transformed life now and forever. So how do we hold on to hope even in the midst of suffering? And here's three simple things that I think can help. You see, when Jesus was faced with his greatest trials and suffering that he knew was coming, he prayed to God and got his friends to pray with him. Jesus, in fact, was so anxious and afraid, it's almost as if he lacked the words to stay, and instead he quoted passages from the Old Testament to express himself. Eventually, he came to a peace about knowing his friends would leave him and that he would die, a peace that was expressed with saying, not my will, but yours. And so maybe that's one way to do it. Maybe the first thing that we ought to do is pray through our anxieties, suffering, and hardships. Be honest with God with where the pain points in life are. The second is to ask others to join you in prayer. Maybe admitting your fears and worries and pain to God is part of what brings us peace because God hasn't forsaken us. And then declaring, not my will, but yours. God, we trust you with our lives. We're gonna move forward with you in the midst of it all. Lastly, remember. Remembering God's faithfulness in the past can bring us hope for the future. When the Israelites would see God move in powerful ways, they would erect altars to remember what he had done. So whatever you're going through, but especially if you're struggling, don't lose hope, don't lose faith. Live a different life because we have a different salvation. As sons and daughters of God, we have a living hope because we have a risen Christ. Be hopeful this week as you go back to work or school. Remember that our hope comes from the fact that we have a risen Christ. He's there for us. He wants to give us hope for our futures. It's been great being with you today. Remember, we're online Wednesdays, so join us there. See you next time and hope you have a great week.